morning this is Chrissy um in my last video where I showed my bare bones journals and little bags and um, embellishment pouches I had a number of comments and thank you very much I was blown away by the comments thank you so much um, but I had a number of comments asking me if I could show how I um, made them I'm not entirely sure whether everyone meant the um, lace pouches, the lace bags, or the little embellishment pouches. So um, today I'm going to show you how I make the lace bags. Um, just to preface this, <laughs> my method is just what works for me. Um, I like a very raw um, looking um finished bag um, I'm all about with my um, projects to have them looking aged and uh, from the attic <laughs> as in my um, the name of my Etsy shop Chrissy's attic um, I like to try and achieve a from the attic kind of a look and to me that is a bit uh, rustic and raw so um, this is bag making 101 and for those of you who are actually perfectionists and like everything to be perfect this probably won't um, be your thing but this is what works for me what I like and I'm going to show you how I go about it so I've already prepped my fabric and lining here. Um, I've chosen this pretty butterfly lining. It this is just the the lace is just from an old table tablecloth that I have um, dyed a long time ago. I can't remember exactly what I dyed it with, but coffee would do the trick. Um, the lining fabric for this one doesn't go in any particular way. The butterflies are going in all directions, so I don't have to worry about what way um, I put my lining in. But if you have a fabric that's going, <coughs> excuse me, in one direction, you'd have to work out how to do that. The size of the bag is determined if you're going to put a a journal in it um, by the size of your journal um, this is the size I used for my bare bones journals and that is going to fit nicely in there so that um, of course you can make them any size you like but that's uh, how I determine the size um, so I'm going to have to keep going to my machine to do the sewing so um, we'll have to just uh, work with that I had a stamped image on the front of my bag and um, you can if you've got words that you would like to use just in a stamp just use a stamp otherwise you can print out on um, print words out on your printer on fabric and I have a little tutorial um, on how to do that but I've just I'm going to use this one today and um, I don't like to use just white fabric that's just me um, I think um, a fabric like this uh, adds also to the authentic um, aged look that I'm trying to achieve so and I never um, just cut around I always like to tear to get the raw edges and that is another um, thing that helps to give the authentic old look um, I'm going to put some cheesecloth underneath it because that's another Thing that we all like to do and um, I think that also helps 
So I'm just going to cut a little piece of cheesecloth there and fray it. Always fray it. And that will just go underneath there. Now that will um, need to be sewn on to the lace otherwise you're going to have the stitching going through to the lining and I have fallen into that trap before where I've forgotten to stitch it on and then it's um, the stitching shown underneath so I'm going to um, just pin that there take it to my machine and sew it and I'll come back to show you just pinning it to the outside lace so now um, I'm going to put a sentiment I want to sew another sentiment inside the flap so I've stamped uh, some words here and I'm going to stitch that just onto the lining so let me do that and I'll show you got that so now I'm two rows of stitching around it and I aim to um, not be too straight I, I deliberately like to stitch my lines crooked I just like that look the thing so I want to do that. is put uh, a little row of um, lace across the top just something narrow across there to uh, the next step is um, I want to put a little lace edge along the top here and um, I usually try and just choose a little indescript sort of a lace just to edge it and um, so I'm going to use this one so if you have a little bit of um, fabric peeking through you know that you've managed to stitch right through everything so I'll just cut that off there and sew it and get back to you I've chosen this pretty um, lace for the front edge and when I sew it on I don't want the um, underneath thread to be um, sewn through this lace that I've already put on so I've pinned it in such a way here that um, the stitching will be covered by this lace I've just pinned this lace back off um, out of the way for the moment while I sew this uh, this lace on because um, if you understand what I mean I don't want I don't want the dark thread to be um, covering this lace so I'm going to stitch that and come back and show you I hope my explanation on that last step was not too confusing but um, you'll see what I mean here I pinned that up out of the way when I stitched carefully where I carefully place where I put that lace so that um, the stitching wouldn't show um, wouldn't be over top of this lace so I pinned that back out of the way and carefully placed this lace on so that when I let that go again it covers the stitching of the top lace it sounds confusing doesn't it but I'm sure you know what I mean <laughs> Okay, now, um, I also want something to be along this edge here, so I'm just going to make sure everything's sort of squared off here as best I can. I don't um, fuss too much over it. As I mentioned in the beginning, I do like the sort of rustic um, tattered look so now I want to put a little trim along the um, this edge of the 
bag so I'm just going to use the same trim as this and pin that on there making sure I'm getting the lining fabric and the lace and the trim also that now I stitched that now and left a bit of a raw edge on there um, I'll just trim off some of these threads I do like to leave to leave some but um, just tidy it up a little And the only thing that's left is to determine how much bag you need to put the so yeah about there I think and the flat will come down like that so um is to sew up the sides so I'll just pin those and stitch them and I'll be back so here we've got the sewn up bag um, and all that remains now is to put the embellishment on it and, uh, I have one that I've made for it hello I'm back again after um, I've been away for a little while so I'm back at now to finish this off and the Sun is casting shadows in my room but I want to get this finished so I can um, upload it I've made this little <coughs> slow stitched embellishment here to go on it and I'm going to layer it with a piece of cheesecloth and just put that there um, I'm going to glue it and this is the glue that I use it's just an ordinary craft glue clear craft glue and I've had good success with this so um, I'm just going to glue the back of that being careful to just glue the piece that's going to be um, attached to the bag so if I glued in more than halfway the glue is just going to get all over the bag so um, I'll put it on an angle because I think it looks better than just having it straight and just throw the cheesecloth out around it and put it in the middle like that and we're done so there you have um, bag making 101 <laughs> as I mentioned um, just my way of doing it and I think I already said that if you like perfection then this may not be for you um, of course there are other ways of doing it and um, if you didn't want to have the raw edges showing as I do well then you sort of do it inside out and turn it and you have neat edges but that's not what I wanted so I hope that's been helpful and um, um, as they say in the um, cooking shows I have another couple here that I've prepared earlier so um, here's another one that lining and the third one so there we are one two 
three. Thanks very much. I'll see you again. Bye.